Hello dear ones, it's Alice. Um, I have a, an alternate theory regarding the, the demon realm that, that I've discussed on many past occasions because I'm trying to get a, a handle on the demon realm. So um, I have an alternate theory that actually places more emphasis on our personal power in the world uh, as human beings. And it goes like this. See, the fourth dimension and the third dimension, they're, they're very unusual because of the uh, relative extremes of polarity involved. And the universe is made of love. And so, um, in the fourth dimension and the third dimension, all kinds of amazing things happen that are uh, there are scenarios that that don't that have more to do with fear and uh, terror and anger and uh, uh, lust and greed and um, those kinds of emotions that are just not even encountered in the fifth dimension, right? So the question, the, the cre question for the creator mind was, how can these um, polarities be experienced? So here is the hypothesis that I've been mulling about for, for quite some time now, and you'll see what you think of it. You'll, you'll think about it on your own. If you do a search of Google Images, you will find, um, under the topic of demons or devils, you will find pages and pages of pictures of the most gnarly, scary creatures in, that you can imagine. You know, so, and, and so, what I gather from that is that uh, two, two possibilities. One is that it's, it's, this is um, kind of a beneath-the-table reality that, that is in the popular mind of, of many different people and it, it bears remarkable similarity from people to people, uh, uh, from nation to nation, from religion to religion, culture to culture. Uh, it, it's amazing the widespread nature of this, what you would call um, cultural myth or archetypal image. So, so that's one idea, archetypal image, very widespread in the unconscious thought cloud of the world. And the other idea that I have is that people uh, in this day of science and of the left brain, people are logging on to something in their dream world on the astral plane that actually exists. It, not as a corporal reality, not in the physical world, but in the fourth dimension. So, it's that theory that I'm going to talk about a little bit more. I consider it possible that when a being of light, such as you or me, uh, decides to enter the lower densities, that it, it will agree to, to separate itself into two separate entities, one of whom remains in the fourth dimension, and could be turned the shadow side or the demon world, and the other of which represents a generally relatively socialized being uh, in the third dimension. And the reason for that is uh, antisocial personalities and mass murderers and all kinds of people like that that used to be greatly admired uh, in the world in early days of civilization, such as the Genghis Khan mental filter, you know, the conqueror of everything, today would be considered just not very viable in the civilization. So there aren't many Genghis Khan filter individuals around, not many anti-social personalities at all these days. Some, but not many. Those that, that are here today, what you could say is that the shadow side of their infinite being and as beauty as, as beings of light and the magnificent of their magnificence of their soul, the shadow side of this that is engaging in these two lower densities is, is portrayed in physical form. 
okay? But for these beings, there is an entity on the astral plane that is as beautiful and as full of love as the being, the corporal being on earth is full of hatred and, um, uh, you know, the bloodlust and the raping instinct, all these bad things, right? And that is not usually the norm. Usually it's the other way around these days. And the corporal entity, the physical me, has all of the wonderful tendencies of the soul, all of the good tendencies of the soul. And, and the, the being that is affin affined, affinity being with me, the portion of me that is the shadow side is on the astral plane and, and taking up the role, what, what you might call, of the demon or devil. My demon or devil, right? The demon in me compared to the angel in me, right? <laughs> so this, this notion uh, would, would, and I'll explain a little more about it in a minute, this notion would account for a, a reality that, that doesn't involve overcoming any other like class of beings here on earth. In other words, it would, it would, it would by assumption, when, when I, the, the goodness of my heart, merges with all of the negative polarities in my shadow side or demon entity in the fourth dimension, then third and fourth D will cease to exist and I will be in the state of unconditional love in the fifth dimension or higher once more. See? So, so in that case there's nothing to overcome, no Satan to overcome, no Beelzebub or Lucifer, no fallen angels for the, to be battling with, or at least not in the main. In the main it's a question of overcoming the polarities and merging the polarities of my own soul once more back into the light. So, that's the theory, and I'm going to go with that a minute or two. Um, I have some more propositions for you. Suppose when we come to Earth, that is incarnate in physical form, uh, we, um, a decision is made as to the gender that we will have, like me, I'm a woman, right? And suppose that in the main, the shadow side, the other side of us, is the opposite gender. This is the being on the astral, astral plane that bedevils us with the uh, samskaras and negative tendencies and habits of thought and emotion that we've accumulated over our lifetimes on earth. Okay, so, so we have actually the left brain, right brain, sacred masculine, sacred feminine already existing in us already there and the only problem is they're in two separate dimensions yeah <laughs> it's it's so dry here this is this is new mexico and it's so dry <laughs> i'm sitting under a big pine tree and it's it's wonderfully shady here and there's a deep carpet of of um pine needles here that looks like it's like it's like being on a feather bed it's so comfortable <laughs> I, I feel like I'm in heaven. But to get back to the point. <laughs> so, so there we are in a setup here on earth. Divine feminine, in my case, seeking the divine masculine, which happens to embody all of my bad traits, right? So what that, what that involves here in the ascension process is forgiving all of the things in, in the masculine that I don't like at all, right? Because there they are on the astral plane vying with me and making my life dense <laughs> and polar, right? So, so the, the thought of a merge of the third dimension with the fourth dimension, in my case, it involves uh, the feeling of love welling up in my heart and meeting the negative tendencies of the heart of the sacred masculine uh, that is also me on the astral plane. And the, the resolution of these polarities will result in the, in the fifth dimensional experience. Okay, so now for men, 
suppose it just just hypothesize that for men who who people who incarnate as men on the physical plane no doubt the the um the astral shadow is is a woman and has in it all of the negative qualities that they just don't like about women in this dense hat in this dense polarity here so all their lives they're bedeviled as it were by these these negative concepts of the of the feminine which include all the past lifetimes that they've had on earth which were feminine and which developed samskaric tem tendencies as well huh. it's kind of a funny play isn't it it's kind of an interesting thought <laughs> it's it's there's a lot of humor there i mean god is a pretty interesting <laughs> Because, <laughs> because in reality there is no such thing as I and other, and the the stance of the ego in the physical world is one of constant terror. Why? Because it's always facing the unknown, which is God, and intending to keep the known, which is very frail and actually non-existent. So how could an ego be anything but very upset? <laughs> <laughs> and always defensive, always hostile towards the other, see? But but think of an ego that is that is clarified, purified, distilled as it were, like a, one of those those skull caps, you know, a little yamoka that changes color and becomes transparent and porous and like light as air. And and so that then becomes the ego. And when that happens, when the ego is very transparent, why then there is no barrier between the third dimension and the fourth dimensional experience. And that's probably pretty cool. That's my idea. <laughs>